Good morning. Welcome to those of you who, <clears throat> who are here in church and to those of you watching online. Thank you for joining us as we celebrate the 23rd Sunday in Ordinary Time. In today's Gospel, Jesus tells us Whoever does not carry their own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. These are difficult and demanding words, but Jesus speaks them to us out of love and not as a threat. The cross we are asked to carry is the same one Jesus carried for us the willingness to be wounded for the sake of love. If we do that, then we can become for others what Jesus is for us, a wounded healer. Please remember to silence your cell phones so that we can worship God without distraction. Thank you. The celebrant for this Mass is Father Francis. Our preacher is Father Roberto. Let us begin our Mass this morning by singing number 713, Take Up Your Cross, number 713. It will be followed by number 914, Glory to God. So Glory to God's 914, carry, Take Up Your Cross is 713. Take up your cross, take up your cross, take up your cross and follow me. Take up your cross, take up your cross, take up your cross and follow me. Whoever wishes to come out. Take up his cross and follow me. Take up his cross, take up his cross, take up his cross and follow me. Take up his cross, take up his cross, take up his cross and follow me. We'll find it. Take up your cross, take up your cross, take up your cross and follow me. Take up your cross, take up your cross, take up your cross and follow me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Our Lord calls us to follow him, taking up our cross, and putting our love of him above all other loves, for he is the love incarnate who comes to save us and to save all those who we love. And so we enter now into these sacred mysteries of heaven and earth come together at the altar in Jesus, in his word and in the sacrament. Let us call now to mind our sins. Let us trust in his mercy 
as we say, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, Ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O oh God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. Who can know God's counsel? Or who can conceive what the Lord intends? For the deliberations of mortals are timid, and unsure are our plans. 
For the corruptible body burdens the soul, and the earthen shelter weighs down the mind that has many concerns. And scarce do we guess the things on earth, and what is within our grasp we find with difficulty. But when things are in heaven, who can search them out? Or who ever knew your counsel, except you had given wisdom and sent your Holy Spirit from on high? And thus were the paths of those on earth made straight. The Word of the Lord. Our psalm is number 794, 794. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Philemon. I, Paul, an old man, and now also a prisoner for Christ Jesus, urge you on behalf of my child Onesimus, whose father I have become in my imprisonment. I am sending him, that is, my own heart, back to you. I should have liked to retain him for myself, so that he might serve me on your behalf in my imprisonment for the gospel. But I did not want to do anything without your consent, so that the good you do 
might not be forced, but voluntary. Perhaps this is why he was away from you for a while, that you might have him back forever, no longer as a slave, but more than a slave, a brother, beloved specially to me, but even more so to you as a man and in the Lord. So if you regard me as a partner, welcome him as you would me. The word of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. And may the Word of God always be on our minds, on our lips, and in our hearts. Great crowds were traveling with Jesus, and he turned and addressed them. If anyone comes to me without hating his father and mother, wife, and children, brothers and sisters, and even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry their own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Which of you, wishing to construct a tower, does not first sit down and calculate the cost to see if there is enough for its completion? Otherwise, after laying the foundation and finding himself unable to finish the work, the onlookers should laugh at him and say, this one began to build but did not have the resources to finish. Or what king marching into battle would not first sit down and decide whether with 10,000 troops he can successfully oppose another king advancing upon him with 20,000 troops. But if not, while he is still far away, he will send a delegation to ask for peace terms. In the same way, any one of you who does not renounce all your possessions cannot be my disciple. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning. A man named Elie Wiesel, Elie Wiesel, was born into a Jewish family in Romania in 1928. When he turned 15 in 1943, he and his whole family were shipped to the Nazi concentration camp at Auschwitz. 
Elise survived, but his parents and his younger sister were killed by the Nazis. After the war and a few years later, Elie became a well-known writer and speaker on behalf of those suffering from violence, repression, and racism throughout the world so much and so well that eventually he won the Nobel Peace Prize in 1986. Years after that, Elie was asked in an interview how he could continue to hold on to his Jewish faith and his belief in God after experiencing an evil so great as the Holocaust. This was his response to that question. My life is not without faith, but my faith is a wounded faith. I did not divorce God, but I'm quarreling and arguing and questioning. My faith is a wounded faith. My faith is a wounded faith. Isn't that a, a powerful and realistic description of how sometimes we feel in our lives when we are really struggling? We may continue to have faith, but it is a wounded faith. Well, that certainly describes me and my faith when I arrived here at St. Dominic's in March of 2019. I believed I mentioned in one or more of my homilies back then when I arrived that I had been through a difficult time in my life and in my priesthood uh, the previous year, because, especially because we Dominicans had decided to leave a parish in Northern California that I had been pastor at for 10 years. We had, Dominicans, we had founded that parish and we had served there for 154 years. And then for various reasons, we decided that we had to leave and we handed the parish back to the diocese. And on top of that, I had lost three important people in my life at around the same time. So because of all that, I was truly devastated. My heart was wounded and my faith was wounded. I still believed in God. I still believed in the church and the Dominicans and in my priesthood. But my faith on all those different levels was a wounded faith. When I got here to St. Dominic's in 2019... I was slowly beginning to get back on my feet, but I still had a long way to go. However, now as I prepare to leave St. Dominic's, I am happy to say that during my three and a half years in this parish, all of you have truly helped to heal my wounded heart and my wounded faith. Your warmth, your smiles, hugs, handshakes, your requests for manopo, for those of you who are Filipino, your faith, your prayers, your encouraging words, your generosity and service, your delicious food and the many, many cards and gifts, love and care that you have given to me and to all of us Dominicans here have been amazing and have been healing for me. But perhaps the greatest thing that you have given to me in these years is to help me to understand and to live out today's gospel in a much more profound way in my life. I want you to look at today's bulletin cover. Uh, for those of you online, it's in your packets. For those of you way in the back of the church, you probably can't see but I chose this cover because it's an image of a broken heart, a, a wounded heart that has been stitched back together. And to me, that's an image of my heart and my faith right now. 
My heart and my faith are wounded, but somehow, because of you, they've still been stitched back together. That's how I feel. Like Elie Wiesel, the man I mentioned earlier, I'm still arguing and questioning God about the many things that have taken place in my life in these recent years that I still do not understand. But even though my heart and my faith bear these wounds, like this picture, you, the parishioners of St. Dominic's, have helped me to somehow stitch them back together. You've helped me to understand and to accept that my wounded heart and my wounded faith are part of my journey. They are part of my saying yes to Jesus and to what he says in today's gospel. Whoever does not carry their own cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. During these three and a half years, you have helped me to understand that my cross as a Dominican, as a priest, and simply as a Catholic follower of Jesus Christ, is to be willing to be wounded for the sake of love. To be wounded for the sake of love. That means that my cross is to allow my wounds to break open my heart, to stretch my heart out so that I can become more compassionate, so that I can become more aware of my need for God in my life, so that my love and my faith can become more authentic and more like Jesus' love and faith. It does not mean that I have to like what has happened, or that I will even understand why it has happened, but it means that I simply have to carry this cross because I want to follow Jesus. Well, guess what I'm going to say next? Jesus is saying that to all of us in today's gospel, not just to me to all of us. In other words, if you want to be Jesus' disciple, you too have to be willing to let your heart and faith be wounded for the sake of love. Because that is the only way your love and your faith will grow. Every one of us here who has truly loved another human being has been wounded by that love. Isn't that correct? And in addition to that, your faith in that person or in those people you have loved has also been wounded along with your heart. Isn't that right? Yeah. And that is because that is the price we have to pay to love. That's the price. But it's also because those people we have loved are imperfect, like us. And so sometimes they're going to let us down and hurt us. Now, every one of us here who has truly loved God has also been wounded by that love, haven't we? And when our heart is wounded by our love for God, our faith in God is also wounded. Now, the thing is, God does not wound us because he's imperfect like us. No, God is absolutely, totally perfect. And apart from that, God is love. The scriptures tell us clearly, God is love. So that means that God has perfectly, purposely 
and lovingly allowed you and me and our hearts and our faith to be wounded again and again throughout our lives. Why? Because that is the only path to divine love and to authentic faith. And that is the only way that you and I can become what Jesus is for us, a wounded healer, a wounded healer. You see, Jesus was wounded in every way that you and I can possibly be. And in addition to that, he was infinitely, infinitely wounded by his passion and death on the cross precisely because he loved the Father and he loved all of us with all his heart. Jesus experienced the depth of human misery and human suffering. His body, his heart, and even his faith in the Father were absolutely broken open on the cross when he cried out, My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? And on that cross, Jesus carried with him not only his wounds, not only our sins, he also carried with him our wounds, all of them. Therefore, he became and continues to be our wounded healer. And he brought us the divine healing that only he could give. But even more than that, because of his suffering, his death, and his resurrection, and through the Holy Spirit, Jesus has given us the capacity, given us the capacity to become wounded healers ourselves, the capacity to share his divine healing with others. My brothers and sisters, True love will always wound us. But true love will also eventually heal us. And it will stretch out our hearts. It will make us more compassionate, more aware of our need for God and make our imperfect love and faith more authentic and more like Jesus' love and faith. In today's gospel, Jesus is inviting you and me to carry our cross and to become his disciples. He does not ask us to do anything he has not done himself. On the contrary, by his wounds, we are healed. By his wounds, we can heal others. Jesus is the wounded healer who invites us to love as he loves. He says to each one of us, will you follow after me and allow yourself to be wounded for the sake of love and to become a wounded healer for others? Again, I thank you for being wounded healers for me in my time here at St. Dominic's. Thank you for helping me to accept and to grow from my wounded heart and my wounded faith. Thank you for helping me to become a wounded healer and a better priest for others. I believe in one God, 
the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In every age, the Lord has been our refuge and our strength. With confidence, therefore, we bring to him our needs today. In thanksgiving for Jesus' willingness to suffer and be wounded so that we could receive his divine healing and strength, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Catholics and all Christians would have the courage to be Jesus' disciples and to be willing to be wounded for love's sake so that we too may become wounded healers for others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those whose heart and faith have been wounded, may they, become, may they come to Jesus and find strength to carry their cross. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. On this Labor Day weekend, we pray for those who are exploited by unjust labor conditions, for the unemployed and underemployed, for mutual respect between employers and employees, and for lasting solutions to the world's economic problems. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the pandemic, the drought, the war in Ukraine, and for those who are experiencing the effects of these calamities, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the soul of John Losell, whom we remember in a special way this Mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions written in our book of prayer, and for all the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord Jesus, you are our wounded healer and our intercessor before the Father. Hear these prayers which we make in your name, for you are Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us sing number 328, Unless a Grain of Wheat, 328.
your sins to the cross and suffered for you. Beloved brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice with your hands when the praise of your name. For our good and good for his holy church. O God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery, we may be faithfully united in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion, for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness, make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, 
by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, said the blessing and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Jose, our Bishop, our auxiliary Bishop, Alex Aklan, who we're praying for his recovery from a, a stroke he had two weeks ago, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. At this holy mass, we lift up to you the soul of our friend, John Losell. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of God, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints, and all who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And so let us turn to one another with love and let us share the sign of the peace of Christ. The peace of Christ. The peace of Christ. with those on watching online and also those here who do not receive communion. Together we pray the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there. And unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof.
Let us sing number 470, 470, in every age, 470. Long before the mountains came to be, and the land of sea and stars of the night, through the endless seasons of all time, you have always been. Let us pray. Grant that your faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life 
through the food of your word and heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for a few announcements. First of all, thanks to Rudy and the choir and, and it's our soloists and musicians. Thank you for the beautiful music. Um, Saturday, a mass, uh, this uh, Saturday mass, oh, oh wait, no, no, that was yesterday. That was Saturday. Today is Friday. What is it? Sunday. There is lots of information about our upcoming parish carnival in today's bulletin. You are especially encouraged to purchase pre-sale tickets and food rides. So f tickets for food and for rides. You can get these uh, tickets now. There will be a farewell for Father Roberto in the parish hall after all the morning masses next weekend and a special reception with music and Mexican folk dancing at 2.30. So please stop by if you want to see something really fun. Um, Monday is Labor Day, so the parish office will be closed. There will be only one mass on Monday, and that will be at 9 o'clock. And that's Labor Day. The Lord be with you. The peace and the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Let us end our Mass singing number 739. Lead me, Lord. Third verse, last verse, 739. my way.